Hello, tiny people living inside of my computer. I'm Spiderfin, and welcome to a rant about Spider-Man. Let's let me start with a question. Does anyone else think that there should be more Spider-Man media where he's friendly neighborhood Spider-Man? I do. I love Spider-Man, and I love him as uh, an Avenger. I love him as a singles guy. You know, I just, I love Spider-Man. But maybe we should get a movie or two where Peter isn't fighting Avengers-level threats. I mean, I love Spider-Man as an Avenger. I love him helping the Fantastic Four. I, I love him fighting those planet-level threats or cosmic threats. I just, I love Spider-Man. But I feel like it's been such a long time since since we had, like, a single big Spider-Man project with, like, street-level, or even just city-level, like, stakes. I mean, Spider-Verse is beautiful. It's a beautiful duo. It's soon to be a trilogy. And I adore it. And I hope the series continues to be as amazing as it has been. And my only real complaints with Spider-Verse has been, it's all multiversal. And I don't think that's always a problem, but so much, so much of, of just superhero media is multiversal stuff. And I want to see some, like, some one-on-one -on -one superhero stuff. I love it. And I love those films, and I love how popular they have made certain characters. Hobie, Gwen, Miles, uh, Kingpin got a huge, like, buff from it. Uh, Prowler, The Spot. I love what it does for those characters, and I love it making stuff uh, popular. But I also want to see those characters back in their homes, with their own rogues galleries, with their own background characters, with their own families, their friends, their lovers, whatever. I want more friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. I don't dislike Spider-Man fighting gods and fighting cosmic beings. But it shouldn't be the only thing that happens with the character. Because then he's no longer Spider-Man. The whole reason people love Spider-Man is that he's just human. That's his gimmick. He's just a really strong human. And, and sure, he has superpowers, but the parts that make him the superhero are his story. It's, it's, it's Uncle Ben, it's Aunt May, it's, it's his history with being like a, like a, like a poor kid. You know what I mean? It, it, those are the things that make Spider-Man Spider-Man. They make Peter Parker amazing. Miles Morales comes in, and he is a very similar character. Sure, he has his differences, but he also has, like, a faithful upbringing where it's, like, mom and dad are very good people, and they do the right thing. His dad's a cop. There, there's so much there. Uh, and most Spider-Men that end up being good guys have, like, a good story to them, and, and I adore it, and most big projects don't show that, such as Far From Home, which is very planet level, uh, you could argue it's like a state or country level threat, but like, Mysterio with those drones and like, Tony Stark attack and all that, could have just taken over, you know what I'm saying? Like, the Avengers are gone, da 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 da, he could have, um, No Way Home was a multiversal threat, again, and I love No Way Home. I like the, the Home trilogy. I don't dislike the MCU Spider-Man movies. I love them. But I dislike how big the threats are, if that makes sense. Like, you can argue that Homecoming was city level, but due to all the alien technology and the ties to Tony Stark, it just kind of it, it feels bigger than a city level thing. Like, sure, if, like, Thor or Hulk or any of them, like, randomly saw Vulture, they could have just killed him. Like, I can't snap for right now. But they could have just killed him like that. But, like, he's using tar Stark tech and da-da-da-da-da. You, you get it. Peter was in Endgame and in Infinity War, and he played a fairly big role in those. Well, in Infinity War, is a big role. In Endgame, he just kind of shows up for the final fight. But, like... And I don't dislike him being in those team-up movies. That's cool. I love that shit. 
but it's like it's all he's there for, you know? It just feels feels weird. Uh, in Insomniac's first game, it's majority street level stuff until the Sinister Six is like a thing. Uh, Martin Lee and Mr. Negative is is sort of like I'd still consider that like city level. If not state level, I don't necessarily look at that and go, yeah, he's taking over the whole fucking planet. Um, but whenever the Sinister Six happens, it kind of feels... It feels a lot bigger. It feels like if they wanted to, they could... World domination is an option if they work together really hard. Because, sure, there's a Fantastic Four in that series. Sure, there's a Avengers in that series. Sure, there's Daredevil, all that. But I, I feel like the Sinister Six could have just kept going and taken over and shit if it wasn't for Spider-Man. Uh, and I love Insomniac. Insomniac is, like, my second favorite, like, Spider-Man thing ever. I love the Insomniac series. So, like, I don't hate them. I just dislike that it became, like, a big planetary thing. Not that it's treated like one. It's treated very... Simple? I try to think of the right word. Um, and then Spider-Man 2, the first act is very city level. The second act is either city or state, depending on how you look at it. I'd say city. But the third act is world domination. Venom will take over the whole fucking planet. Um, if it's not for Peter and Miles. Um, but, like, you know... It's cool. I don't dislike these stories. I love these. Anything I'm pointing out here, I probably really enjoy. Uh, you can even go back to the Amazing Spider-Man movies, and they weren't really street level. I mean, Andrew has some awesome scenes that are street level stuff, um, but he's not really a street level Spider-Man. I mean, Lizard is going to change like the whole city of New York into lizards, which is this gonna which is then gonna turn the whole planet into them. Like it's it's not gonna stay a city thing. It's like a worldwide threat. Um Electro is a worldwide threat. If he would have became pure energy, he'd be unstoppable and then, you know like Peter wouldn't have been able to handle that and then it'd become a whole world domination sort of gimmick. Um Goblin wasn't a worldly threat in that. Um but he was the background villain, and also all of his, like, bad intentions are, like, directly at Spider-Man and Peter Parker, so, like, it just doesn't doesn't necessarily sit as, like, yep, I'm the big bad. I hate you. Um, freshman year seemed like it was going to be more of, like, a lower-level thing, especially considering its lack of Tony Stark, um, its inclusion of a bunch of smaller characters, uh, all of its inclusions of smaller villains, but we haven't gotten too much about freshman year, and we still haven't, and we haven't gotten, like, an announcement of a date, and we haven't got told that, like, it's gonna happen or it's not. It just kind of exists, which feels weird because it felt really cool, felt like something new. Um, also, Norman in, like, the, the mentor role I think is pretty fucking sick. There's all sorts of stuff that they were gonna do there, and they just, they didn't. Um, which is a bit weird, but it seemed like it was going to be lower level stuff, especially considering it's a much younger Peter. It's like MCU adjacent, so it's like Peter before the Vulture and stuff. So like, I think that would have been really fucking cool, but considering it never came out, never happened, I mean, eh, um... Even looking back at some of the games from, like, tw the 2010s, like, Edge of Time is, like, worldly level. Two worlds, actually. It's multi-planetary destruction levels of, of shit. Uh, Shattered Dimensions is multiversal. It, there's a bunch of, like, city and state and planet-wide threats within, but overall it's a multiversal threat. You know, Mysterio's going to destroy the fucking multiverse, not just his little planet. Um, I don't know if Web of Shadows counts as a 2010s game. It might have been, like, 2009 or something. But Web of Shadows is a worldly threat. Like, Venom will take over the whole fucking planet if you don't... If you 
even the bad ending of that game is the planet being taken over by you. So, like, you know, that's planetary. Um, I'm trying to think. The, to- the Sam Raimi movies, they are, like, the first one's city, maybe statewide. You could argue that if Goblin wins, he'll take over the whole world, but it's implied, but you don't really know. Um, Doc Ock will destroy the city, so that's a citywide thing. Um, Sandman is definitely street-level villain. He's probably the strongest of the Raimi villains. Maybe Goblin. I don't know. Uh, It's definitely one of those two, though. And um, with that, it's like a thing of... That's a citywide threat, but, like... He could probably do more than that if he was an actual bad guy. Venom is probably a city, maybe statewide thing. I feel like you'd be able to get rid of him using the government. Um, But that's that. And then cartoons and stuff. I I love them, but I didn't include them a lot on this because, like... I'm trying to think of the right way to explain this. I think the cartoons do a pretty good job of keeping things to a street-level thing. Sure, Ultimate Spider-Man did, like, its version of the multiverse, but, like, that was, like, an event. It wasn't the whole show. Most of that show is is street-level, city-level, every once in a while a worldly-level threat, which is fine. Uh, I didn't watch Spider-Man 2017. I'm going to. Don't worry. I just need to set apart the time to do so. Um, Spectacular is a great example of Spectacular Spider-Man is a great example of here's a bunch of city level threats Um, at its biggest I'd say state level but I I, I don't think there's any like spectacular Spider-Man the show moments of like yep the planet's gonna die I don't think that happens Um, the 90's cartoon is really fucking good at being street level. Like, literally all of it is street level, except for, like, some of the, like, Secret Wars and Spider-Verse stuff. Um, But outside of that, it's mostly, like, street level, state level stuff. Um, The 60s Spider-Man is all street level. Um, The new animated series was, like, Street, sometimes worldly level. Um, what was the one in the late 90s? The CG one with the weird animation in the fucking like crazy 2099 ass suit. I can't remember what that was called, but it was like a mix. It would have street level stuff and then random world level stuff, and then back to street. It was kind of funky. Um, but overall, the cartoons do an alright job of. The cartoons do okay at keeping it human level threats, I guess. Um, And I know the comics have a good mix, because you can look for comics that are planetary, you can look for comics that are uh, cosmic, or you can look for comics that are street level, or you can look for comics that are state level, or whatever. But I'm specifically looking at these bigger projects, like movies, games, uh, stuff like that. Uh, And I'm currently working on my own fan series of Spider-Man. It's like nine films and a couple spinoff shows and stuff. But uh, I had like a rule that I had set for... um, There was a rule I set pretty early that was that I want to keep it to Spider-Man for like most of it. Like, I I use characters like Black Cat, I use the Fantastic Four, I use Daredevil, Luke Cage, stuff like that. But I I never make the threat so big that it overshadows Spider-Man and Peter Parker. Like, the first villain is Vulture. And I use Vulture in a way that is very street level. He doesn't kill people, but he robs people because he's trying to get money because he has cancer and he wants to pay, get, like, money. He's basically just Walter White, but superpowers. 
and I have him becoming the vulture being a thing of like a mutation from Osborne and blah 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 but he stays a street level character in the second movie Mysterio is a street level character I'd say the biggest threats in my like nine movies or whatever are Goblin who I would consider state maybe he could probably take over the world but like it's not like his plan um Venom who probably, once again, could do worldly stuff, but it's not like his plan. And then Sinister Six, which could do the world, it's not their plan, but, like, overall, throughout the series, there's fucking, I don't know, eight, nine, ten, something like that villains, and by themselves, all of them except for two are city-level, maybe state, if you really tried. But, um... That's, that's like a rule I set was to make it... I like Spider-Man to not be the... He's the best superhero because he's a guy, you know? And I want to get more lower-level stuff from the character in the future. Comics are always growing. I want movies of Peter not being... I want a Miles Morales movie where he's not fighting the multiverse. I want Miles Morales to have, like, a, a Spider-Man movie. Um, I, I don't hate Avengers Level Threats. I don't hate Spider-Man dealing with them, or helping with them, but I'm unhappy with how much of that we have. I miss Spider-Man saving a cat from a tree. I, I miss Spider-Man helping an old lady across the street. I miss Spider-Man stopping a bodega from getting robbed. I, I miss... I miss Spider-Man helping a homeless man, just giving him money. I miss Spider-Man saving a bus for, full of children. And I know that's more of a Superman gimmick, but, like, you get it. I miss Peter Parker, Miles Morales, Gwen Stacy, Hobie Brown, Miguel O'Hara, whoever, just being a friendly neighborhood character. I miss them helping people in their neighborhood and not being Iron Man, not being Spider, uh, Superman, not being Thor, being the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Because a hero isn't someone with powers, a hero isn't someone who can save the world a hundred times in a week, a hero is somebody who does the right thing, and a hero is somebody who does that for the right reason. And their responsibility isn't always the planet. It's not always their street. Sometimes it's a friend or a family or a job. Sometimes it's simply stopping a small thing from happening. Helping a little kid. Helping a homeless man. Helping an old lady. Sometimes that responsibility is something super simple. Because as Uncle Ben once said, with great power comes great responsibility. And I really want a great friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. That's what I want. So, in the comments, tell me your thoughts. Tell me if you like Spider-Man alone, if you like him with a team, if you like him with the Avengers, if you like him fighting small-time villains, if you like him fighting gods, if you like him fighting cosmic characters, if you like him fighting people like Thanos, if you like world threats, state threats, city threats, street sets, whatever. Tell me what you think. Let me in on, on your thoughts on this crazy character we love. Love you guys.